Good morning, everybody. Uh, this is Sandia Rao. I'm the principal product manager for uh, Teams devices, and I'm here joined by Greg Barabalt, uh, my colleague in Teams devices. And we're here to answer uh, questions that you may have regarding power mo powering modern meeting experiences around the hybrid workplace using Microsoft Teams devices. Just a quick agenda on what to expect this morning. Uh, you know, we will go through some team intros, uh, which I just did, um, and uh, give you a few uh, tips and then uh, get right into the Q&A. So uh, really quick, there's a chat box on the side. Uh, you can ask your questions there. Uh, feel free to uh, upvote uh, your favorites and uh, there will be experts online here uh, and we'll try to answer as many questions as possible verbally. Uh, and we'll try to uh, bubble the most popular ones to the top. Uh, we are recording this session, so there's no need for you to to do that uh, on your on your end. And as always, please adhere to the Microsoft Code of Conduct. And here's a quick snapshot of that. So with that, uh, let's get into the Q and A. So the first question I see is, uh, when will Microsoft Teams Room devices natively support Zoom meetings? And I'm gonna pass that to my colleague, Greg, to share his input on that. Great, thanks, Sonia. Um, so I'm Greg Barabal, uh, Program Management Lead on the Devices team uh, in the Teams product group. Um, so, we announced actually at Ignite last year uh, that we would be supporting Zoom and Cisco WebEx meetings on our Microsoft Teams Room platform. Um, Cisco is now in market. Actually, our update uh, uh, earlier this year made that available to all customers, so that can be done today. And to make that work, you just forward an invitation uh, that you may have received from a, a WebEx user, send it to your conference room, and it will show up right on the, the console as a one-touch join option. Just click the join button and you'll jump right into your WebEx meeting. Um, Zoom is in development right now. We're actually hoping to get that released together with Zoom in about two weeks. Terrific. Thanks, Greg. Mm -hmm. And uh, our next question here is, uh, around three by three and seven by seven uh, video participant support. So uh, I'm going to throw that back to Greg uh, to tell us when that will be available on Microsoft Teams rooms. So actually, I'll give a, a slightly bigger answer to that. Um, we are uh, working on a brand new gallery for the Teams room uh, Windows device. And that new gallery will right away feature three by three. We're actually gonna make that available in about two weeks, right at the end of this month. Um, that will have the three by three support, but this year we will also bring together mode and the large gallery support uh, to the Teams room on Windows platform. Um, but there's more. Uh, we're also working on that same set of features across all of our devices. So the Teams room Android, what we had formerly called collaboration bar, uh, we'll have that support as well, as will the Surface Hub, um, and we'll launch the Surface Hub version of that this year as well. So eventually that front of room experience will look the same and have the same capabilities across all of our device categories. Great, thank you, Greg. So uh, let's go to the next question. Um, so switching gears, uh, we have an MTRP managed services um, announcement uh, that's being made uh, recently uh, in terms of how that works with some existing tools like Intune and SCCM. Uh, and somebody here is wondering if there's any documentation on that. And I'm going to throw it over to my colleague, uh, Michael Tressler, uh, to tell us a little bit more about where to find some documentation. Hi, I'm, hello, I'm Michael Tressler. I'm a senior customer engineer at Microsoft. So the so the question there is is kind of twofold. One, the Teams Rooms Premium is an offer where that's MTRP 
that that was I said in the question. Teams Rooms Premium is an offer where Microsoft does the primary management of all of your Teams Rooms, and that's expanding over time to other devices. Uh, so if you go to rooms.microsoft.com, you can get all the information there about that offering and sign up for a free trial. As far as what are the advantages and disadvantages of using Teams Rooms uh, Premium versus uh, SCCM and Intune, the they, they kind of can they can work together. So while Teams Rooms Premium will patch and update the windows on Teams Rooms Premium uh, via the Teams Rooms Premium, uh, you may still want to do your own management to monitor CPU performance, things like that, and do kind of common reporting that you may want to do. So they can work hand in hand. They aren't necessarily uh, one or the other. But I think if you spend some time, uh, talk to one of our experts on the Teams Rooms Premium, reach out for the trial. They'll help guide you through what what the best uh, what the best balance is between those tools for your environment. Great, thank you, Michael. So uh, we're waiting for some more questions to come in. I did want to just uh, make sure that you all are uh, aware that you can find all the Microsoft Teams content um, at aka.ms forward slash team sessions. So definitely uh, go to that site and you will see uh, a list of all the sessions across our meetings, uh, chats, channels, um, and devices teams. Uh, so you can check them all out. So we have another question that just came in, uh, which is I, I think a bit, a bit of a follow on to the three by three and seven by seven question here, which is what is the maximum number of tiles supported in the gallery view? Um, and so I, I can actually act, answer that really quick. Uh, it's it's 49, so seven by seven is uh, what is available uh, at the moment. Uh, and we'll go to the next question here. Uh, let's see, what is the timeline supported uh, to provide the option for static conference IDs to support Teams conference rooms? And for this one, I'm gonna throw it over to my colleague Greg again. Thanks. So uh, the question is about um, joining using an ID rather than a one touch join. Um, that is a capability that we're working on right now. Um, I don't have a, a date that I can share quite yet as to when that will uh, be available, but the idea is to allow people without scheduling the room to be able to uh, simply walk in and type in a code. Um, I will say when we do ship that feature, it will be available for all of our uh, third party direct guest join. Uh, services as well. You'll be able to enter the code for a WebEx meeting, a Zoom meeting, or a Teams meeting uh, and join directly from the console. Great. And while I have you here, Greg, uh, we have a question about whiteboarding. Um, and the question is, how do you do whiteboarding in Teams? Yeah, that's a great question. So, um, Teams, of course, is a terrific collaboration platform, and many times that collaboration uh, requires the use of uh, shared whiteboarding. So there's two ways that we support whiteboarding um, in, in a Teams room. Um, one is actually with a traditional old school uh, ink whiteboard that you'd hang on the wall. Um, and for those, we actually have a content capture camera that you can add to any Teams room uh, that you just point directly at that whiteboard. And uh, people in that room can get up and, and ink the way they, they typically would. And the people that are remote to feel really included in the conversation and see everything that's going on, um, will be able to see what's being written on that board. And using AI, we actually clean up the whiteboard. We make it look really sharp. We frame it just right. And we even make the person writing on the board look invisible as they write so that you can really just focus on content. So that's analog whiteboarding. We also support digital whiteboarding through the Microsoft Whiteboard app. Um, so anybody on any Teams device uh, through the share tray, so just clicking the share button, will have an option to start a Microsoft Whiteboard. Um, when you do, it will show up in the Teams experience on any device. So mobile phones, desktops, laptops, and all of our room systems. Uh, if you're in a Surface Hub room, um, like I have here, You'll have a terrific experience with a, a native whiteboard app uh, built right into Windows. 
if you're on a Teams Room device or collab, uh, Collaboration Bar device, uh, Teams Room Android device, you'll have a view experience of that if you're on a non-touch screen. But if that room is equipped with a touch screen, you can also contribute uh, from the room. So we are seeing an increasing uh, number of conference rooms get set up with a touchable front of room display. And now uh, by starting whiteboard, you can ink directly there and have a multi-user collaborative inking session. That's great. Thank you for, for that detailed uh, answer there. So uh, an interesting question just came in and it's a, about Teams panels. So Teams panels is something that uh, we just announced during uh, this Ignite season. And uh, the question that came in is, will there be Microsoft first party Teams panels available? Uh, I don't see our Teams panel expert here, but I think that Greg can actually help us answer this at a high level. So I'm going to pass it back to you, Greg. <laughs> Great, um, thanks. So uh, for the most part, our, um, with the exception of Surface Hub, um, our room devices is built on a very broad ecosystem of, of partners that build terrific hardware for us. So for Teams panels, um, the first two partners are Crestron and Yealink. Um, we don't have a plan uh, to do a first party hardware version of that, but the application, uh, as with all of our systems, are native applications developed by Microsoft Teams. Uh, so uh, while each device may be different and target different markets or have different hardware capabilities, the core software experience on all Teams panels will be the same. So you'll have a great way to find nearby rooms, uh, check into your meeting, uh, see the availability of a room from a distance. Um, you know, we, we carefully craft a set of requirements for the device, um, although we don't actually build the devices ourselves. Great. And in, in your answer, you actually talked a little bit about Surface Hub, um, and we did just get a question about Surface Hub here. Um, and the question is, when will the Surface Hub move under the Teams devices? So is that coming back to me too? <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I just wanted to keep it with you uh, since okay. you know you you're you're the sure. expert on Surface Hub and and Teams Room. So, well, so the Surface Hub device is actually built by the the Surface Hub team. Um, that's not part of the Teams organization, but we do uh, develop. My team actually does develop the application that we run on the Surface Hub. So that really is a native first party uh, teams experience that are built by by our team. Um, we don't, although the licensing is the same. So when you buy a uh, Teams Room standard or Teams Room premium license, um, you would apply that to Surface Hub just like you would apply it to a Teams Room uh, Windows or Android device. Um, but it, we don't actually bring that into the, we don't call it a Microsoft Teams Room device. Uh, it is a Surface Hub. Um, but yeah, from a licensing and application point of view, uh, those are all developed by our team. And so, you know, the main main point behind that is the experiences that you get, the things like together mode and the large gallery and inclusion features like raise hand or captions um, will all be provided across all of our native endpoints from Surface Hub to Teams Room Windows and Teams Room Android. Great. So I'll give uh, give Greg a little bit of a break here. Um, a question has come in on uh, Teams Rooms on Android, and will the direct guest join feature be supported on the Android devices um, and the the formerly known uh, collaboration bars? Um, I can I can quickly give a response to that one, uh, which is that uh, we do we will not have that capability available this year, but it is some, something that we're certainly working very closely with our uh, colleagues on uh, the Windows platform um, to be able to um, understand how to get that functionality onto Teams Rooms on Android. So it's something that we will be uh, looking into uh, for for next year. 
So moving or moving along uh, with regard to uh, the questions here. So there's a lot of questions around uh, the government cloud and uh, GCC compatibility, um, especially around whiteboarding and breakout rooms. Uh, I want to uh, see if uh, we have an expert on the line who can help with um, the timeline for for those features. Uh, Greg, are you uh, are you aware of those features coming to Teams rooms um, with GCC support? Yeah, so we're we're actually investing uh, a lot right now in bringing all of the GCC capabilities uh, and GCC high capabilities up to uh, kind of up to the same bar as our commercial uh, features across all rooms. Um, we've actually made GCC available for Surface Hub already, um, as well as for Teams rooms. Uh, GCC high compatibility will be launched very soon as well. Um, I can't speak directly to the whiteboard capabilities within that. Um, whiteboard team can do that, but uh, as far as the rest of general Teams feature set, um, you know, our goal is to keep those aligned uh, as much as possible um, and, and really shrink the timeline uh, down to hopefully zero days of delay to get to GCC and GCC high. It's an investment we're making right now uh, to, to accelerate that. Great. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of whiteboard questions this morning. So uh, along those lines, um, uh, we have a we have a question around when the Teams whiteboard app will have the same or, or similar functionalities as the MS whiteboard Win 10 app. Um, so if you could talk a little bit more about uh, when some of those additional features uh, are coming to uh, Microsoft Teams rooms, I think that'll help our listeners. Yeah, and that's sure. So, Greg. sorry. Yeah. Um, so we, we're starting a very close relationship right now with the whiteboard team to do exactly that, to move, uh, advance that functionality and bring the built in web experience for whiteboard. Um, many, many new capabilities like you see in the in the native application. Um, I, I can't go too far into the timeline for that. Uh, it's something we're working on now. It'll come fairly soon. Um, but yes, the goal will be to make that experience and the capabilities be the same regardless of what uh, application or uh, whether you're in the Teams app or in the native app. Great, thank you. So I'm going to switch gears a little bit here. Uh, people seem to be uh, interested in Cortana coming to Microsoft Teams rooms. Um, and one question is around um, joining meetings with voice. Um, if you could share a little bit more information around how that works with Cortana um, when you come into the room and uh, how you can join a meeting and uh, some of the you know false positives and things like that that could happen um, in those situations. Uh, if you could elaborate about uh, how that works, I think that'll really help our viewers out. And I'm going to point that back to Greg here. Yeah, so we're uh, we're actually getting very close to launching our uh, Cortana support for Teams Rooms, um, which will allow you in a hands-free way uh, without touching any shared device, which is super important right now as people are going back to work uh, from you know being working remotely. Uh, to be able to start your meeting with just using your voice. So if the room is scheduled for a meeting, um, you can simply walk into the room and say Cortana, join my meeting. Um, and any scheduled meeting at that time, uh, hopefully there's only one. If there's more than one, Cortana will clarify it for you. Um, but if uh, there's a scheduled meeting, Cortana will get that meeting started uh, without touching anything. At the end of the meeting, you can do the same thing. Cortana end the meeting and the meeting will close. Uh, the overall uh, set of skills that we're building there um, will expand to provide uh, far more capabilities. Right now, we're, we're going to move on the um, start and end very quickly and be able to do things like dial phone numbers, add people to the meeting, um, control the layout of the screens and the device itself. Um, and you know, more of those skills will get developed over time. Um, I did see one question about how do we uh, avoid things like false positives or false, false activations. Um, 
And that's work that we're doing uh, together with both our own software team, the Cortana team, and our hardware partners, um, where they are uh, working on their own firmware and their own uh, devices to meet uh, Cortana's pretty rigorous uh, audio quality bar uh, to make sure that we don't create false activations. That can be very distracting and disruptive in a meeting. Uh, so we will not enable a specific device for Cortana support until we feel really good that it's meeting that quality bar and is not going to cause uh, in-meeting distractions uh, because of false activations. Uh, great question, though. Great. And we're going to give Greg a little break here and move on to uh, our expert, Kyle, on device management. Uh, we have a question on the new scheduling panels. Um, and the question is, will they be able to be managed in the team's admin center and uh, will Intune be needed? So I'll kick it over to Kyle. Hi, I'm Kyle Spies. I'm a program manager on the Teams Devices team. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, yeah, all of our Teams devices uh, will be available for management within the Teams Admin Center, and that includes uh, the new, newly announced Teams panels. Uh, so when uh, those are available to the general public, expect those to uh, auto enroll into Teams Admin Center, uh, just like uh, the, the rest of our Teams devices. Uh, from an Intune perspective, um, Intune will also be uh, needed for those devices uh, for enrollment and login and some other scenarios that uh, we're bringing uh, to those devices and our, our other Android devices. Great, thanks Kyle. All right, so uh, let's see. Oh, we got one that has quite a few upvotes. So uh, let's go back to Greg here on uh, MTRs. And it's a bit of a troubleshooting question. So the question is that many of the MTRs need a reboot and sometimes a hard power off or on, um, off and then on. Um, so will there be a way to achieve a hard power cycle of the MTR uh, at some point in the future? Um, yeah, so uh, good question. We a couple of things about reboot. So one is that all Microsoft Teams rooms um, operate with a, a nightly maintenance reboot. So every device will reboot uh, in the middle of the night when the device is not being used, not involved in a meeting. Um, it will reboot itself uh, and make sure that, you know, software, that's our opportunity to uh, check for Windows updates and make sure all the software is up to date and ready for the next business day. Um, the uh, on those occasional times, if something does go wrong with the system and need a reboot, um, what we're seeing are some customers that are using hardware solutions for that uh, to actually uh, trigger a, a power cycling of the device or by actually remoting into the device um, and uh, issuing a reboot command that way. Um, so there are through our remote management tools like the Teams Admin Center um, and also tools like uh, the premium service. Uh, we're able to remotely uh, reboot a device uh, if it gets into a state where it's um, you know, not able to join a meeting. Great, thank you. So uh, let's let's go back to some of the announcements that have been made uh, recently. Um, so. Uh, Daniel Billington here has written in that um, we heard yesterday that a new view is coming for teams that will give more space to conference rooms um, even without cropping. And so he's wondering if that'll come to the team's room um, systems uh, shortly and um, you know when that might be available. Uh, going back to you, Greg. Um. So I think I understand what that question means. Um, so today in the in the Teams gallery, as we lay out different uh, options for video participants, um, we have a really cool feature where we find the person in the view and we kind of crop it around, crop the view around that person. It makes people look framed nicely and they're nice and square uh, in the gallery. But when that participant is a meeting room, uh, what frequently happens is you kind of get this cropped view down the middle of the table and you don't see any of the people sitting there. Um, so we are addressing that uh, with two fixes, two changes. Um, one will be, or is in fact already, 
that you can do a, a fit to frame uh, for any video participant. So if you just right click on the gallery item, um, you can choose the option called fit to frame. Uh, on, an, on a mobile device, you can just double tap on that participant and it will fit them to the frame. And that gives you the full view of that room. So if you want to see the 16 by 9 uh, video feed from that conference room, uh, you can double click on it or, or select fit to frame. But to make that automatic, uh, the gallery will uh, take a feature soon where it actually understands that a room is streaming video, that it is a conference room, and it will automatically select fit to frame. You'll get that kind of full screen video uh, from a conference room, um, and it won't crop it and give you just the, the narrow view. Um, so that capability is um, actually going through testing right now and will be released very, very soon. A good one, though. Great, thank you. I'm going to kick it back to Kyle here. Uh, we have a lot of actually interest in this one. Um, are there plans to allow admins to actually customize their MTR room displays um, with maybe desktop graphics, their logos, um, and manage that um, via the device management uh, tool that we have? Yeah, great question. Um, so currently today you can set custom backgrounds uh, on the uh, MTR for Windows devices uh, using uh, the XML settings and uploading the custom background directly to the device. And uh, we have some instructions for that in our documentation online. Um, with regards to bringing that functionality to Teams Admin Center, uh, that is on our roadmap. Um, I uh, just be on the lookout in our in our public facing roadmap of when that feature will be available, uh, but that is something uh, that we're looking to bring to our customers. Great, thank you. Thank you. And uh, we have a question about uh, enab enabling wireless display. So using the room, the the displays in the room. Um, even if you don't have a team's meeting scheduled. And so um, maybe Greg, you could share with us some of the different ways that um, you know, uh, folks could actually use uh, the, the team's room system, even if a team's uh, meeting isn't actually scheduled. Yeah, sure. So uh, we would call that an ad hoc conversation or just uh, an in-room uh, discussion. So if people were to gather in a room, Someday we'll all get together in a room again. And when we do, um, if you want to use that screen maybe to project your own laptop or uh, phone display, um, today the option that you would have is to plug in the cable. So all Teams Rooms devices uh, include an HDMI ingest cable. You can plug into uh, any laptop or Mac um, and show that on the display. But uh, we want to do something much better than an HDMI cable. Uh, so we're working on a capability we call Teams Casting, and that'll be available later this year that will allow you to walk into a room uh, with any device, uh, any phone, any laptop or tablet, detect uh, the nearby display, and with one click in the Teams client, start projecting uh, your screen to the display. So great for those ad hoc conversations. I just want to you know, quickly share my screen and let people see uh, and share in the room reason that we're doing that within the Teams client, uh, there's kind of two reasons. One is that it's ubiquitous for all users in any device. So I don't have to learn on my iPhone, I use AirPlay, on my laptop, I use Miracast or anything else. One button in the Teams client works in every room. The other is that it's now actually using meetings. Uh, you didn't schedule a meeting and it was still done with one click, but you get all of the great meetings capabilities in that casting session. So if you want to invite somebody else, you can just add them and it will call them and pull them into that session uh, and they can be remote. You can record it, you can transcribe it. Um, so anything you could do in a normal meeting, you can now do in this casting session. Uh, so we're really excited about this. Uh, I think we showed it in a couple of the, the videos uh, here at Ignite and we'll get that out to all of you uh, just, uh, next quarter actually this year. Great. Thanks, Greg. So as we wait for a few more questions here, I did want to make a public service announcement that we have um, 
a, a cute uh, a selfie booth where you can take photos. Um, you can take a virtual uh, uh, a, a photo of yourself in our virtual photo booth um, and you can share it in your social media channels. So um, I did try it out a couple days ago. It's quite fun. Um, so check that out and the link is here aka.ms forward slash teams photo booth. So we uh, continue to get a lot of whiteboarding questions. So uh, why don't we go back there? And um, one of the questions that we have is, when will whiteboarding be supported outside of a tenant? So if you have maybe uh, external guests or um, external participants that you want to whiteboard with, um, how do you how do you make that happen? And and uh, you know if not if not available right now, uh, is that coming in the roadmap soon? I'm going to throw that to Greg uh, for for more details on that. Great. Um, that actually we should find a, a somebody at Ignite for the mic from the whiteboard team for that. I don't know the detailed answer for a timeline on that one, um, but uh, let's maybe have a private answer there and, and follow up offline. OK, great. And there was another question on uh, whiteboarding with MTRs. Um, and the question is around, um, can you use a touch screen uh, with an MTR and use that for uh, digital whiteboarding? Greg? Yes, yeah, you can. So um, any Teams room device can be set up with a touch screen display. Um, so in addition to the HDMI cable, uh, you just run a USB cable and connect that back to the room's compute and set it up in Windows as a touch display and you've got full inking capability um, with touch on the whiteboard session. So it's a great way to turn a uh, traditional Teams room device into a, a full collaborative room. Great. And it looks like Michael uh, wanted to share some additional information. Uh, Michael? Yeah, there, there's a, a blog article on the Microsoft Teams tech community, which will walk you through setting all of this up. So if you go to techcommunity.com, find the Teams blogs area, and then search for MTR whiteboard, uh, you'll find an article giving all the details on how to set that up. That's a great source of information in general, too. So that's a good reference to that blog site. A lot of great information there about setting up Teams rooms uh, across all of our various platforms. Great. And while we're talking about whiteboarding, um, you know, let's talk a little bit about the uh, content camera and what you can do with the content camera um, as it relates to whiteboarding. And the specific question that uh, we've we've received here is, can you actually save an image? Um, that you that you can um, you know get from the content camera while you're whiteboarding. Can you save that into a meeting file container so that others can access it after the meeting? I'm going to throw that back to Greg to share more details. Yeah, so uh, we're working on an ability to let you not just take a snapshot of the whiteboard and and share it. Um, as an image, but also to drop that image into the Microsoft Whiteboard application where they have a really great feature they call Ink Grab uh, that will take whatever you've drawn on the analog board and convert it into a digital vector drawing. And so now remote participants can actually change the content. Uh, they can erase lines and draw new lines and really feel like they're part of that uh, part of that collaboration session. Uh, so it's a pretty fun way to, to take analog content and turn it into digital. Someday we wanted to go the other way too, but we've not figured that out yet. Put it back <laughs> on the analog whiteboard. <laughs> that's great. Uh, that's great to hear. All this whiteboarding talk makes me feel like I need to brainstorm and do do more whiteboarding now. So, um, so that is uh, essentially uh, most of the questions that we've gotten uh, thus far. Uh, again, I will. Uh, let folks know that if you go to aka.ms forward slash team sessions, you can um, you know, view all of the sessions uh, that are available as, as they relate to teams uh, during uh, this week's Ignite program. So uh, definitely check those out. 
And we'll give it a few more minutes. I know we're wrapping up uh, soon uh, in terms of the time here. Uh, we'll give a few more minutes in case any new questions uh, do, do come in. And in the meantime, um, you know, why don't we talk a little bit about the um, IP uh, peripherals that uh, you know were are being announced uh, this this week at Ignite, and uh, maybe Greg, you could share a little bit about that. Um, yeah, there's actually a lot of uh, really exciting announcements that we're making um, throughout the week, and uh, for me, I, I think two the two that really stood out were the new Teams panel device that's going to allow uh, this deep integration with the hallway and the scheduling. Uh, with the room system itself and the other is about uh, the intelligent speaker device uh, and we haven't ha seen a question about that yet but let me just give a quick summary intelligent speakers will be um, available from um, epos and yaling two of our, our partners and provide an in-room experience that will let folks sitting at the table have their voice recognized and appear uh, with their name in the meeting transcription there's a really terrific way to create that inclusive meeting experience and let the people that are remote really understand um, not just what's being said, but who is saying it as they go back and review that transcript later. Uh, so two really exciting announcements that um, that we showed off uh, during um, a few of our sessions here. Um, Great. And with that, I, I think we are just about at time. So, yeah, it looks like it, So. Uh, thank you uh, so much for for all your answers, uh, Greg, Kyle, Michael, and the rest of the team here. Uh, I know uh, many folks have been working uh, behind the scenes answering questions and um, typing those answers out. So uh, thanks so much. And I do want to uh, uh, wish all of our viewers uh, a great uh, rest of the uh, Ignite program. I hope you do enjoy all of the sessions that uh, you will be uh, seeing uh, later on this week. Thank you.